Hello scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at some types of forces. The first type we'll look at is gravity, a natural force of attraction between any two objects. How this works, we don't really know, but we are getting closer. This summer you may have heard about an amazing discovery of, a, of what they call the Higgs boson at the super collider in Switzerland where they smash together atomic particles to try to find out what's inside of them. And that's ultimately, well, one of their goals is ultimately to be able to describe the absolute nature of matter and how from there we can just understand how matter can attract other matter. But for now, we know that it happens. We're getting closer to understanding why. Let's look at the example of the sun and the earth. The sun does pull on the earth by the force of gravity. So we can label this force of sun on earth. And many people don't think of this, but there's also the force of the earth pulling on the sun. This is the reaction force. Last year you learned about Newton's third law. These are action-reaction forces. There is an equally strong force of the earth pulling on the sun. Here we're using the examples of two planets, but it could be uh, any two objects. For example, let's draw our one kilogram mass from today in class. We know that when we hung it on the spring scale, it was being pulled down to the earth with 9.8 newtons of force. So what are the two objects in this case? It is the one kilogram mass and the entire earth sitting below the one kilogram mass. And the mass of the earth is quite large. Its mass is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So there is a force of attraction between these two objects. We can draw these in and label them. There is the force of Earth pulling down on the mass. And likewise, there is a force of the mass pulling up on the Earth. We can definitely see the effect of the force of the Earth pulling down on the mass because if we release the mass, it falls to the Earth. We don't really see the effect of the gravity, gravitational force of the mass acting on the Earth. The Earth, we don't really see the Earth rising up to hit the mass. But it actually, um, it does move somewhat, very, 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 very slightly. But its mass is huge, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So it is not very much affected by the force of gravity um, from the one kilogram mass. We're going to learn more about this when we study gravity in more detail. Let's go down to the next type of force, tension. Tension can be defined as the force of one object pulling another object. So perhaps you've seen a car that may have gotten stuck in the mud or stuck in the snow or one time I got stuck in the sand at the beach. A tow truck had to come and get me out. Actually it was a guy in a pickup truck. And I'm going to draw a pickup truck here. Give me a moment. Okay, so here's the pickup truck I drew. And this guy connected a chain from the pickup truck to the front of my car. And then he accelerated rather quickly and was able to pull my car out of the sand. Now, my car didn't look quite as nice as this car. But let's take a look at the forces. My car was experiencing a forward force of tension. You know, I'm going to draw that a little bit more along the line of the of the uh, chain. So I was experiencing a force of tension. This would be the force of the truck on my car. And actually, um, we can draw a reaction force, which is the force of 
my car pulling back on the truck, which makes it difficult for the truck to accelerate. But we're going to leave that topic for our, our lesson on Newton's third law. So this is a good example of a tension force. It's a chain pulling my car forward. And if there was too great a tension in the chain, the chain may break. We can also see this with an elevator. An elevator has two main forces acting on it to allow its motion. It has an upward force of tension, which is the force of the cable pulling up on the elevator. There is also a downward force of gravity pulling down on the elevator. So I'm drawing this vector of the same length as the, the tension, but it doesn't have to be. So here's the force of Earth on the elevator. And here we're actually drawing two different types of forces. The one in red up here on top, this would be a tension force. It's the force of the cable pulling up. And then we have the force down here of the earth pulling down on the elevator, which would be a gravitational force. Let's take a look at normal forces. A normal force is defined as the force between two surfaces that are touching or pushing on each other. Pushing is a better word here. The force is always perpendicular to the surfaces. And I'll throw in here that normal is a mathematical word. It means the same idea as perpendicular. Um, when we talk about perpendicular, we're, we're usually referring to two lines. When we use the word normal, we're referring to a line that is perpendicular to a plane. All right, so let's take a look at an example of here with the trash can. Um, so here's the force, the normal force between the trash can sitting on the floor. The floor is exerting an upward force on the trash can. And we can call that force of floor on trash can. There is also a gravitational force pulling down on the trash can, but we're not going to draw that. We're just going to draw the fact that the floor is supporting the trash can by pushing up on it. And you might imagine that um, if this floor was a thin wooden floor and you threw in a bunch of bowling balls into that trash can, then there's going to be such a strong um, force between these two that it might actually break the floor. And now the floor is no longer exerting an upward supporting force, and that trash can would fall right through the floor. What about the case of a bowling ball? A bowling ball that was, was moving with a velocity to the right going into the wall. The moment that that bowling ball hits the wall, that wall is also going to be experience, exerting a force on the bowling ball, causing it to not only slow down, but even then to reverse its direction and go back out the way it came in. So this would be force of the wall on the ball. And there is also, by the way, a normal force here, which is the force of the floor on the ball. All right. Um, we will be seeing some more examples of these. Let's take a look at the last type of force that we'll discuss today, friction. The force between two surfaces that are, I'm sorry, uh, the force between two surfaces that resist sliding. We think of friction in two different contexts. One, when the surfaces are not moving, you have objects that are at rest. We call this static friction. For example, pushing on a large TV to the right, but it doesn't move. I'm going to draw a person here 
pushing with all their might on this television, trying to get it to move across the carpet, across the floor or something, but they're not able to because there is the force of friction which is occurring between the TV and the floor. So this would be the force of the floor on the TV. The second type of friction is when the surfaces are moving past each other. We call this kinetic friction. An example of football sled moving across the grass. So you can imagine we have some some San Marcos Royals here on the football sled with their big muscles and okay and their football helmets and all that okay now they're being slid across by one of the other players there is friction though it's not so easy to get these players to slide because of fric kinetic friction force so we can draw that here this would be the force of the grass on the sled preventing the sled from sliding over the grass easily we will be studying Newton's third law and the reaction force to the grass trying to slow down the sled is that the sled is also pushing the grass the way that it doesn't really want to go either. So if you were to see a trail left behind by this sled as it's being moved across the grass, you're going to see a bunch of grass that's being, uh, that was pushed down by the sled as it was going over it. So the grass is exerting a force on the sled, but the sled is also exerting a force on the grass causing it to either get matted down or maybe even pulled out of its roots. We'll discuss that more in examples when we get to Newton's third law. Okay, so we can stop for now. I wanted to introduce you to these types of forces. Make sure you do the reading in your book and take a look at the next video where I do an example of what we call free body force diagrams. Alright, see you there.